It's so good to be here in God's presence today again. And I just want to take a reading from Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praise God. Just let me put that down. Now, today I want to speak about tongues in a box. And I, first of all, I want to say you can't compartmentalise tongues, just as you can't compartmentalise God. And I'm afraid in, 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 in a church building, a material church building, I'm afraid there are many people today to try, try and do that for their particular organisation. We try to keep it all contained within our building. We try to keep tongues contained in our children. We try to straightjacket Christians by certain teachings that say it can't go out of the midweek prayer meeting. It can't go out of your private closet. But I want to say today that it's not scriptural for a start. When we see on the day of Pentecost, they couldn't contain it. They broke out and they went out into the streets proclaiming the wonderful works of God, glorified God in so many tongues that everybody understood because it was spoken so many languages. They couldn't contain it and it broke out and it spread the fire throughout the world. And that's why it's come over to these shores that in, in the UK to me and to you in other parts of the world. And so we can't do this. We can't confine it to a midweek prayer meeting or to your little prayer closet or your room. Yet how many church leaders and Christians today are trying to do this by trying to, to isolate tongues to a midweek prayer meeting or your prayer room in your house. We're too conservative at time with our Christianity, but they weren't on the day of Pentecost. You see, we've got to realise that in this world today, the public and the media are spewing out filth every day. And we don't mind about that. You know, we don't feel uncomfortable with that. A lot of people don't. They don't feel uncomfortable about it. But how many Christians today are uncomfortable with tongues? And yet you hear all that filth coming from the internet. You see that filth coming out of your TV. You listen to people talking filth at work and in your college and in your school. And yet the moment people speak about the pure language, the holy language of the Spirit, they go up in arms about it when it's scriptural. There's something wrong here. So where can we speak in tongues? If they can speak their filth, Let's speak our holy tongue. Where can you speak in tongues today? Well, it goes further than your church building. It goes further than your private prayer closet. You can speak in tongues as you come into a meeting. If you come into your church meeting, a member of our fellowship is coming to the meeting the other night, in the car, driving along, speaking in tongues, and the Lord gave a vision. And that vision was interpreted to us in the meeting. It spoke to us and helped us. And why can you, you... You can't drive along and you can't speak your tongues. Yes, you can, because it's nothing to do with the mind. It's coming from your spirit. And you can concentrate at the same time. And so, there's other areas where you can speak in tongues. Areas of spiritual darkness in your neighbourhood. Many of you are living in neighbourhoods of oppression and darkness need to start speaking in tongues and come against those works of darkness because that's what it is. And when you speak in tongues, the air will be cleared. You can speak in tongues when you're exercising people's houses. Now, I'm not asking you to go exercise in people's houses. You need to be led by the Spirit into this kind of ministry. But I use this ministry. And when I'm in a person's house or in a, in a situation where I, have to, where I have to detect demons, I'll speak in tongues and I can locate where they are. And I'll know exactly what to do uh, in, the, in this situation because I'm speaking in tongues and I'm aware of the spirit and the interpretation of what the spirit's given to me so where demons lurk you can speak in tongues and in locating demons you can speak in tongues in woods where witches and warlocks congregate and have covens and so on and where they practice their evil that's what you can do and you can break the power of them you can make them powerless by speaking in tongues you can speak in tongues outside fortune telling booths or parlours where clairvoyance or fortune tellers operate and make them powerless because it's the devil that's operating these people and you can thwart the works of darts by speaking in tongues to the powerless and nothing will come forth from them it will it will um, it will absolutely stop them operating praise the lord make them powerless um i always remember um an evangelist woman that used to come to our 
uh, we, we were in a church in the North Wings called Bake Up, and I always remember this one called Mrs. Lloyd, a great Bible teacher as well. Uh, uh, better than any man I've ever heard teach the Bible. She was a great Bible teacher, really in the Word of God, a very powerful woman in faith, in signs, wonders and miracles. And I remember us, her telling the story when she was a young Christian, how she walked into this uh, meeting where there were mediums and spiritists, and they were having their meeting, and she walked in, and as they were contacting the medium, she started speaking quietly in tongues and made them powerless so and couldn't operate. <laughs> I thought that was incredible. This is a woman of faith. I'm not asking you to do that. You've got to be led by the Spirit to do these kind of things. But she did it. You can use speaking in tongues in, in closing down uh, meetings where people are holding seances and there are mediums there. You can stand next to those places and close them down by speaking in tongues, either individually or in groups. I always encourage people to work in twos, if not twos, more. Don't operate on your own unless you're strong in the faith. I can operate on my own because I've been doing this for years and years and years. I've had many battles with the enemy. I fought with the devil on the floor and demons and got up in victory, but it's not without a fight at times. So, you know, uh, unless you're strong in the faith and you're very experienced in this ministry, then don't do these things on your own. I'm not saying you shouldn't, if you're oppressed in your own house or at night and this works of dance trouble in your children, you should go up and, and cast those demons out. I don't be afraid of the devil. God's given us authority and power of them. But I'm talking to you, taking it upon yourself to go into people's uh, houses and start to do exorcism ministry. You need to be led by the Spirit of God in this kind of thing. But speaking in tongues is the key to get rid of the devil. The devil hates tongues because of the anointing of God in that person coming through the tongue. Because he is the inspiration for the tongue, the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I'll, I'll speak on my next video about how we closed down a spiritist meeting where they're operating through mediums and, and, uh, and so on and contacting so, the so-called dead. They weren't. They were contacting evil spirits, familiar spirits. And we closed the place uh, down through speaking in tongues. We, we spent a few years doing it, but in the end, it closed down. And God gave us a word and he did exactly what he was going to what he said he would do so you can pray in tongues in any, any place where principalities and the powers of darkness are at work because we're we're called we're commissioned by god to tear down strongholds and we use tongues to do it that's why paul said i speak in tongues more than you all and there are so many of you christians out there you don't understand what he meant by that why do you ignore that when paul said i speak in tongues more than you all what he was actually saying was he prayed in tongues more than his understanding and he prayed in tongues so much, he could actually say, I pray in tongues more than you all. Can we say that today? Do we value this wonderful gift given to us by God? In all the above activities, you must be led by the Holy Spirit and work in pairs or more. I must emphasize this. Thank you for listening today. And don't forget this wonderful language of the Spirit of God.